Did you grow up with the NES, PlayStation, Star Wars, cartoons, and ABC TV? Do you like to think who would win in a fight between Batman and the Master Chief? Comics, games, movies, music, and TV. They're gonna tell you everything you need. Superheroes or nothing got your back. They're gonna save the world of geeks. Everybody, it is I, Alex, the producer, in what is to be, I think, our second last recorded event of the year. Uh, that's all going to depend on whether or not uh, we are able to gather. Birdman and I, look, we are supposed to be meeting up in the next couple of days to record our Christmas commentary uh, slash review, uh, which has changed from the initial planned uh, of a. Uh, uh, the Ernest Saves Christmas uh, f- to the Street Fighter 1994 movie because at the last minute we received a review copy of the new Blu-ray Steelbook that's been remastered and it comes with some features and all that fun stuff. And Birdman reminded me that, hey, you know, that was a Christmas movie, right? And I went, what? He goes, yeah, it came out like a day before Christmas and it's releasing within a week or so of Christmas and it's it's been, what, 27 years? something like that so we thought hey why don't we do that one and you know it's timely the release is out and all that so that's the plan uh it's also in the midst of us receiving provincial news that they're limiting social gatherings down to 10 people uh i'm i have plans to go out (laughs) in that i'm seeing spider-man on monday which is a day after those new social things change um i've tried to book my my uh booster shot for the the vaccination and i've got it scheduled for the 17th of january and then two days later they announced that they were opening it up to earlier for people that were under 50 and i went oh let me go check if i can do it earlier and then i found out that they were completely out including all the times that were after the date i initially set so i'm sort of lucky i got a date at all and there might be some changes in there i've got on some cancellation list to see if i can get it earlier and tomorrow the plan is for me to go and just get a regular flu shot if it's available. Just anything that is going to help boost the immuno system and the general for the next few weeks. Uh, I'm trying to avoid as many other people as possible. Luckily, the movie theater that I'm going to looks to be only limiting about five or ten people in each screening. And they're spreading us all out, which is, I mean, I went to the movies in when things were like barely open in the summer, right? So I, I did it. <laughs> but that be and that was like yeah that was a while ago so i mean i should be fine and i really want to see spider-man i can't see myself not seeing it so i'll be seeing that uh and but the day before that i should be going to birdman's and i think we're good because we're not going anywhere else we're just you know we're huddling together and if that changes and we have to cancel it then we won't be having a commentary maybe we'll scramble up something else we can discuss christmas movies or things they mean to us or something uh but that's again you know backup b or c plan and then other than that before going to visit just my mother and grandmother who've not been going out anywhere i am going to be seeing uh if i can go quickly to uh one store to pick up like some cold cuts for them to make them like a breakfast brunch and that's going to be part of a christmas present and that's it i'm going to be huddled home i guess until (laughs) probably february or march depending on how this goes uh so i'm hunkering down for it i mean luckily it's happening at a time when it's already going to get icy and crappy out so i mean i was looking forward to doing more things maybe like actually being able to celebrate my birthday this year um in february which would have been very nice uh seeing as last year well two years ago we had really bad weather And I didn't really get to go do anything or hang out with anybody for my birthday or anything. And then like three weeks later, everything was in lockdown. 
And then last year it was the height of the pandemic. Nobody had their shots here yet. We wasn't even open to anybody, like unless you were in an old age home. So I didn't get to do really anything for my birthday either. I was hoping that this year would have been nice, but I guess not. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, we have plenty of stuff for review. We were going to see how this was all going to work as far as putting out a regular show. And it's, it's not. We're basically shut down production until uh, the end of January now. We're taking a fairly big hiatus. We've pre-recorded a bunch of stuff in the background. So we have, I think, five or six episodes of, including uh, an intro episode of the Stargate uh, Twig Tactical Weapons Integration Group, which is our actual play role-playing game uh, based on the Wyvern Games uh, Stargate role-playing game. Now, that was originally going to come out middle of December. What we're doing is we're going to launch the pilot for it slash introduction episode on New Year's Day. And then you're going to receive it every Saturday until... Uh, I guess we're sort of back and we might have a, a little bit of overlap with that. But uh, as far as what's coming the rest of this week and upcoming is, well, we're going to have uh, Earth versus Soup episodes uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, like we've always had going forward uh, into the new year and beyond. So that, that's going to be regular. Uh, as far as regular other programming, other than this show dropping, you're going to maybe get the Christmas commentary or whatever else is there. Um, I don't think we have anything planned for New Year's except for obviously the uh, the live action role play, and you might get some syndicated episodes where we appeared on like uh, Nerd to the Third Power or something. But that's pretty much it. No regular other programming. There might be another one of these review episodes sometime in, in the New Year, but until the New Year, we're not. So this is going to be a bit of a longer one, but at the same time, they're going to be quicker reviews, more uh, more of a a simple recommendation on certain items that we've received that could have come in for the, the gift guide, but didn't quite make it. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have just, you know, maybe a minute or so to talk about each because as of when this drops, you will still have time to order from Amazon or pick up at a local store uh, or anywhere that still does, you know, a couple day delivery. Uh, it's dropping a week before Christmas, so you should be fine. Uh, so, we're going to do this a little different in that if there's a few things from the same company, they're all going to be in their own review section together, sort of a, a, a roundup of each company. So we're going to get into that. There's going to be some movies. There's going to be some games. There's going to be some accessories. I think Birdman might have one or two that he had left over that he just couldn't fit in with the regular show. So we're going to put them all in here. And we just want to make sure that they're all out. And I'll have them in the uh, links in the descriptions for the show so that everybody can get a chance if you have last minute stocking stuffers or last minute shopping to do or have an eye on it for after Christmas when it's the Boxing Week sales in Canada. Or even if you're an American, you might be able to get some good sales going on if you order from up here. So let's get right into it. Just in time, or I guess right before Christmas, we have our roundup of everything that's come in since the gift guide came out, or at least since we recorded the gift guide, that, that didn't quite make it into it from our friends over at Paramount pictures what we have uh, are a few releases and there there's not really a theme or motif for these they're just that they came out around the same time and they would make great christmas gifts uh the first one here we have is the avatar last airbender legend of korra ultimate blu-ray collection this is a series that or a collection of series and whole universe that i've seen uh before this remarkably little of uh, I, I had heard of it i was turned off by the big budget live action feature from M. Night Shyamalan because you know I wasn't a fan of the series and then I heard the movie was terrible and I was like I don't know but I had always heard that it was really really well done uh, as far as the the original source material and I went okay when this was uh, you know given as an option to check out I went sure let's let's see it's everything bundled in two uh two larger size Amaray blu-ray cases that are then put into a cardboard slip box uh there's like postcards and, and art uh features that they put in between them so it sort of uh gives you a bit of a collector's feel not like a super high-end box set but one that at least fits on a regular shelf has a bunch of cool extras and collects everything all into one set uh it is uh as far as the avatar last airbender it's the original full screen there's no cropping done here it, so it's this original aspect ratio uh it has all the bells and whistles that were in the previous releases uh, for both that and Legend of Korra, 
but there's also new special features. So there is an auditory exploration with the Avatarverse creators. Uh, there's conversations with other producers and, and uh, the creative talent on board with the creation of the show. And then there's all the other making of features and everything that were already included. So they do include a couple extras that were not previously released. So there's a little bit of a hook to get you in if you maybe had some of the other previous season releases or collections. Uh, there is uh, eight collectible art cards. That's what I was talking about with the, the little extras they threw in there. And they're in a little uh, container that's in between the two sets in, in the case so that it sort of fills out the box a little more. Uh, pretty sweet set. Uh, it's a lot of stuff to watch if you're going to watch something over like the holiday season or if you're looking to collect and you just want this uh, it will take up a lot less space than individual seasons or sets that were released previously so i just think that's really cool if you're a fan of the series you probably want it and if you're not i watched a handful of episodes on both shows just to see what the visual quality was like uh for this review and i went you know what it, it the original holds up really well and Legend of Korra is still beautiful so i'm probably going to spend some time over the next few weeks uh, in my downtime and just watching individual episodes or have them on the background and i'm probably going to get sucked in and continue on from there uh moving on uh beavis and butthead do america there's a 25th anniversary edition it's hard to believe it's 25 years now this is a blu-ray uh single disc set uh, that includes a, a digital copy of the film uh, you can redeem uh now the story behind this i mean you you, you probably know beavis and butthead so I don't need to go too deep into that. But my personal story with this is I remember this came out, uh, again, 25 years ago. And I remember renting it on VHS with my friends. And we were like little kids. And we were just, well, I guess not little kids. We were like 9 or 10 years old. And we were laughing pretty darn hard uh, right at uh, when, like, they, they farted on the fire and it blew up. And the thing that's probably the biggest takeaway from this movie uh, other than that it had Bruce Willis in it, <laughs> was the uh, the putting the, the underwear on his head and being like the TP, TP for my bunghole, that stuff. That was a non-stop. Like we're talking pre-internet memes. There was not a, a kid in middle school or high school that wasn't going around for like two years straight until South Park got big quoting this movie in certain scenes endlessly it was a pretty big pop culture phenomenon with uh i guess like the i guess like older millennial kids the kids that were born in the mid 80s or, or later it was sort of that was this was the movie this was that that teen angst comedy movie before south park really took everything over uh included there's like uh, commentary on here from mike judge which is always good to listen to his breakdown of his of his productions uh there's uh mtv new celebrity shorts there's trailers tv spots uh and a couple other behind the scenes featurettes on the production of the film well made and of course digital copy is always great to have in there too uh i recommend that one i hadn't seen it in probably 20 years and it holds up remarkably well especially in hd uh, another quick one here is harold and maude now this is a film i had heard of before uh and I had seen, where did I see this? Was it on TVO or something? I think it was like a Saturday night at the movies. They showed it. And, and I, I mean, it's it's a re relationship, older, younger, uh, well-made, uh, not going to be for everybody. No, I'm not going to say like, it, if you're a fan of just good dramas and coming of age stories, you'll probably like it. But it's 1971. It's not going to be for every audience member out there for sure. Um, there is a commentary on there with Cameron Crowe, which is cool. Um, you have Cat Stevens actually talking about Harold and Maude in it. Uh, some, some theatrical trailers. Uh, it does say that it comes with a digital copy, but I will note, I had a brand new retail copy. I opened it up and there was no digital copy on the inside. Uh, so I don't know if, if my disc is just missing it. I don't know if there's a misprint on the actual artwork. Um, I've not, I looked online, I didn't see anybody complaining, saying that their releases didn't have the digital copy. So it might just be that my copy, they forgot to put the uh, the little paper insert in there. So if you're looking to get a digital copy of this with it, um, 
you should be fine because I, again i didn't hear anything different about it it's just that my copy didn't come with it which i thought was odd because that's the first time i've ever seen that where i received a sealed retail copy that advertised a digital copy but it didn't come with it and it's all over the back saying you know apple i itunes apple tv and it's not there so again it could be that i had a sometimes it happens if you have a pre-release copy but mine appeared to be a full retail release so uh take with that what you will but it is a good movie and it, it's it's the kind of movie that your parents might like it's not necessarily one that you are going to be super duper into unless you're a big film buff and you like uh historically uh significant films uh other ones we received here uh i guess the last two in this batch are infinite which is the mark Wahlberg uh film this is a 4k release with digital code and it's one of the first ones I've seen where it's a 4K, but doesn't include the DVD or, or sorry, Blu-ray with it. And so it's 4K and digital. Uh, now, special features are uh, some behind the scenes featurettes, uh, some of the creation of the action uh, and some of the, how they did some of the special effects. It's a pretty good film. And it's interesting because I had just started. I, I watched like 10 minutes of the movie uh, on Paramount+. Plus when I was giving that a try because that was available for, I think a dollar 99 for the first three months to try out up here. And I know that there's still a fairly sizable gap in, in the content they have on there. Cause a lot of it is still signed to like Netflix and other places. And I know crave has all the star Trek franchise. So there's a lot missing from the Canadian version, which is why it's a little cheaper here than it is in the States. But, all of the new features that they're creating for it are showing up there. So I was like, oh, I'll give Infinite a watch. And as I was watching it, I heard a, uh, a ring at the bell at my door. And I went to it and found that there was a package there from Paramount. And it, there was the Blu-ray or the, the 4K disc review. And I thought, oh, well, I'm going to stop that and pop this in and watch. And I can confirm that it, it's, uh, it's a pretty good uh, sci-fi film. And as far as uh, visual quality go, the Blu-ray or so the 4K disc significantly higher quality obviously because your data rate is like 40 megabytes per second versus you know the eight or ten you're going to get from uh streaming but the streaming was you know no slouch in its own but uh it's always nice to see that even with something coming out as a streaming release first they are getting a uh, physical release for those that are collectors and want to collect them um it is you know it's not a completely bare bones release but and it comes with a, a digital copy that you can retain, uh, which is pretty nice. But if you're somebody who's maybe on the fence about whether you want to pick up this picture and like you're a, a big sci-fi fan, but you're not sure if you want it on 4K, it honestly, I think it's a pretty good movie. I would give it a watch on Paramount Plus because, again, you can sign up for like two bucks right now to watch and you, maybe watch the film there. And if you like it, you're like, hey, I want to keep that in my collection. And you can go and pick up this uh, 4K Ultra Disc that comes with a a digital copy for iTunes as well. And finally, and this is sort of the piece de resistance, uh, there is the 4K Ultra HD plus Blu-ray plus digital edition of the 65th anniversary of the Ten Commandments. So this is a film that I think most of us, even you know younger people, like I think even if you're under 20, you've probably at least heard of it. Uh, I would say most of us that are over 25, over 30, have seen it multiple times because it was aired endlessly at Christmas time or your parents watched it or you had it on those double VHS tapes where you used to have to split them between two or three tapes even sometimes. Uh, now, this has been remastered meticulously. We're talking super, super high quality. Full. It was one of the highest expensive films when it was released and it was in Technicolor and and it was the colors were always vibrant even on vhs and now it looks even better it looks like as good as it would have been actually it probably looks better than when you saw it theatrically originally unless you saw it in one of those like cinerama road shows where they had like special equipment or 70 millimeter films so it looks absolutely fantastic and it's interesting because the blu-ray still split the movie into two parts because this this is like three hours and 52 minutes long uh so interestingly you can fit on on a dvd you can fit four hours it'll look like crap because you have to lower the quality or you have to do some trickery with the uh with the image to make it work um on blu-ray you can fit four hours of a film like this but again you start to lower the data rate of 
uh, the perceptual quality on it. And if you blow that up to a big screen, it will look like crap. So their solution was to split it into two on Blu-ray. Uh, same with, uh, I mean, digital copy, you're going to get the whole movie in one big file. That's always an advantage there. Uh, and it does include th that here too. But it includes a single disc for the 4K release. And it. so what they've done is they put it on a triple layer disc, which I believe is either 66 or 90 gigs. So what they've done is not only is it 4K, so it's already higher resolution, more visual detail that way. They're able to cram it on there and it retains a higher overall bit rate because of the, you know, a Blu-ray being 50 gigs max at this 66, it can fit, you can fit like eight hours on, at full 4K quality on one of these discs. So this is probably the first time where you've ever been able to have a single physical disc or, or physical medium release of the film where you don't have to get up and flip a laser disc over, change a disc, change a VHS tape. And it's the maximum quality available. You're not going to get a streaming quality. Like, I'll tell you right now, your digital copy ain't going to be like 60 or 90 gigs. So uh, this is good. And even streaming quality, if you streamed it anywhere, you're, they're not going to stream you that. It's just too much bandwidth. So this is, as of you know, this recording, going to be the best way and, and most complete way to watch, especially since it's on one disc. But you, you get multiple versions on here, which is awesome. So... Uh, features wise it includes uh on the actual uh 1956 4k ultra hd restored U uhd disc it does include the commentary uh which is something that not everything they don't usually have a ton of features but an audio commentary doesn't take up too much space so they can do that the second disc is the uh original movie part one and it has the commentary um and it has uh, a making of feature on there. The third disc is the second half, plus more of the commentary, more of the making of a news reel on the Ten Commandments, uh, theatrical trailers, making of trailers, uh, and then the 1989 re-release trailer for it. And then the fourth uh, disc, which oh yes, that's what I forgot to mention. The fourth disc here uh, actually has uh, a Blu-ray of the uh, uh, the 1923 feature film which was also created by Cecil B. DeMille. This and it was at the time considered one of the highest budget, I think it was the highest budget, uh, silent films. So this was actually, this movie is a remake of one of the biggest films of the silent era. Um, so it also has hand tinted footage of all of the scenes. So they've gone back and done like the really high quality tinting process to make it look like they would have done in theaters because back then they used to actually have somebody sit there and put like a tinted filter in front of the projector uh, and to make it interactive so it's cool they include all of that here it would have been awesome um uh even though it's not there it would have been awesome if that fourth disc the the 1923 blu-ray was actually also a 4k copy uh because it's always nice to see those really old films blown up like that but honestly uh it looks good enough as it is i don't know how much better it would be without a painstaking restoration of it of its own film so uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And it comes in a really nice steel book. So if you're looking like it, you don't even have to be like a religious person to watch this. It's just a marvel of cinematic history and one of the best epics out there. Great special effects, fantastic casting, the costuming, the color, everything is great. Even the audio holds up a lot better than you'd expect for a 1950s movie. So I would give this one sort of a must buy for any film collector out there. And that's going to do it. That's the sort of the roundup of all the Paramount releases that uh, we have been waiting to get a chance to check out and, and explain to everybody. So uh, that's going to do it. We'll see what Paramount has in the new year. The good folks over at Deep Silver sent a review code to us for chorus or as we thought <laughs> this week in geek looking at all the press releases for it initially it was corvus because the u looks like a v in the uh, artistic art of the cover for it but it is indeed chorus uh it's retailing for 40 bucks us uh, i think that makes it roughly 50 canadian and uh what is it this is that shooter space shooter it looked a little bit like colony wars a little bit like sylphid uh that we saw a couple years back presented i think it might have been at the xbox showcase or might have been playstation something like that it's a bit of a blur the last two years as everybody knows uh but it came out uh, rather quickly in the beginning of december uh we received a review code right when it came out 
but it was also when we were doing our gift guides and uh, game awards preparation and stuff. So we were working on it in the background and I just finished it and wanted to get my review out before uh, we end f at production for the year and come back sometime at the end of January. So if you're looking for a cheaper, uh, not cheaper as in quality, but cheaper as in price tag release that is uh, surprisingly good. Now I got the PS5 version for review. So it has adaptive triggers and rumble and all that fancy stuff. Uh, and it controls quite well. You do everything from your ship. So you're flying through space. You're uh, using a search sort of beacon that you can find hidden objects around you. All your missions are accepted. It's, it's very RPG-ish in its elements of what you do. You are transporting items, collecting items, killing pirates and uh, solving mysteries and murders and stuff by following trails of, of different vehicles. And you're at the same time upgrading your ship, using the economy of the system to uh, to upgrade shields, weapons, uh, capacities, and, and special moves and stuff. And you can also then view certain um, historical events in your mind through uh, encountering like these radio frequencies and images, sort of like an after image of what happened in the past. So you can unravel what this big epic space opera is all about. It's well voice acted. There's good audio. Uh, it's I can see why it's, it's priced at that $40 price point instead of 60. I think simply because it's, it might have that one element that feels like, Hey, it's, is it missing something? But it's not, it is a complete game. It's what we used to call an A release before everything nowadays is either it's like a B game or a triple A game. No, this is that A game. This is what we used to get regularly into the PS3 era before everything switched to either super high budget or super low budget. This is a medium budget, high quality title and it controls very concisely. It is beautiful on next gen consoles. Uh, and it, it's exactly what I was hoping that we would start to get more of is this middle ground game that provides a really good pace, really good quality release, but isn't over bloated or, or entirely dependent on super high end graphics. Uh, it is well placed, well played, and I would really highly recommend it. Basically, he was a geek. Leave me alone, geek boy. Holy shit, you geeks are badass. If you listen to our holiday gift guide, which I really certainly hope you did because there's a lot of great stuff in there, uh, we talked about a couple of releases from Kino Studios or Kino Lorber Studios, which we had received stuff from back in 2018 and then sometime in 2019 just sort of fell off and then we finally got back in touch and uh, got the Night Gallery Season 1 and the Kolchak Night Stalker Complete Series. And it was pleasantly surprised at how good they were restored on Blu-ray. And we had another release that I said I was going to mention in a later review because I wanted to take time to watch it and, and see how it compared. And that is Jean-Claude Van Damme's Hard Target, the John Woo movie, John Woo's first American feature. I had seen this on VHS years ago. I had the original universal dvd releases where they had the tabs on the side to had to open to open your case and it was always a fantastic movie on dvd i have never seen it in high definition and lo and behold this release has both a 4k ultra hd disc and a blu-ray so i took the time to watch both copies uh i made sure to watch the uh the the blu-ray first just so that i would you know set my expectations and the 4k is so good uh, now, what's interesting here is it's a 4K restoration of the unrated international cut, which I remember my uncle having. Um, he had like the Hong Kong edition because he used to go to like Pacific Mall and pick stuff like that up. And which meaning means it's it's more action, more violence, a little more crazy. And it's from the original camera negatives, which is not what was on the universal releases I had previously. So this is a jump up and it, this is this is worth it if you're an action fan you're a van damme fan this is like it's a it's a must buy go out there and buy it it's not something i would think and most people would think kino would put out which is what's weird like you'd think this is like something another boutique studio or like universal themselves would 
But you know what? I'm happy with this because when Kino does something, when they put stuff out, they don't do digital noise reduction. They don't do a lot of wacky stuff with the playing with the picture quality. They give you a pristine picture that's a, like scanned with minimal to no digital noise reduction. You're getting the film on screen. And that's exactly what you get here. There's also audio commentary with some uh, film historians. There's uh, a feature uh, interview with John Wu. There is an interview with Lance Henriksen. There's interviews with Nancy Butler. There's uh, an interview with a stunt coordinator and the theatrical trailer. There isn't any involvement, it looks like, from Van Damme himself. Uh, but that, you know what, that's fine because a lot of times when actors like that get on there, they just talk about how great they were. They talk about how much cocaine they were doing back then. Uh, but you, what you get here is uh, enough special features to keep me, you know, a fan happy, but also the fact that you're getting the Blu-ray and the uh, the 4K disc in the international cut, which had not been released previously in North America by Universal. So very happy with this release. Uh, you, you would make any action fan happy this is one of the best pure examples of 90s american action films out there van damme at his peak before uh, his own um, ego took control and completely you know went over the over the top with uh, his next feature release which was uh street fighter which you're probably going to hear from us a little later this week but that being said uh seek this one out i'll put a link in the description for it uh, very happy with this release. I hope they get more action films like this to release under the Kino Lorber brand. The good people over at Milestone sent us a review copy of probably one of the more underrated and for, I don't want to say forgotten, but uh, less talked about releases of the year, uh, which is the uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed, which is the arcade racer uh, based on Hot Wheels, obviously, uh, that also recently came with uh, a Batman expansion pass uh, that includes a whole bunch of extra car little cars to collect, uh, uh, missions, and, and so on and so forth. And we had missed it in its initial release, so uh, when we got the copy, we got the season's pass so we could get some of the other content that came with it. And I was pleasantly surprised. I thought that this year was going to be just the year where where I, I got one arcade racer that I liked, when, and that was the Cruise and Blast, which, you know, that is outside of this isn't the same company or anything. I'm only mentioning it simply because this is a highlight of the year where I, we got one game that I really enjoyed that way. That was an old school arcade racer. And we got another one here that feels like it's from the same era, different style, uh, a little more. This is a little more like a console game that you would have found on the PS2 or GameCube only in high definition uh, 4k playing it on, you know, my PS5. Uh, whereas the other one was more like an arcade game from the late nineties. So I'm pleasantly surprised here. any, you know, it's, I'll get this out of the way. There are a lot of collectible things that you can get, and there's uh, currency that you can use in-game, like microtransaction-y stuff. Yet, most, if not everything, can be earned just from playing the game, which is the way I've always preferred it and the way you know I, I've always liked it. If I ever encounter a game where it looks like it's a pay-to-win scenario, we either don't review it or we will say it flat out and refuse to review the game. Because we feel that, as, as a personal point of ethics, we don't like that at This Week in Geek. This is not one of those. This is something where you can just play it, earn it, and have fun, uh, and go on and, and just... You could have hours and hours and hours of fun playing this. I played with a few different cars, upgraded them, uh, played around the tracks. Uh, it's solid. I didn't encounter any glitches. The audio is great. There is an overworld uh, to some of the Seasons Pass stuff where you're, you earn objectives and move around on the map like you would a grid on like a mario 3 where you move around and select the level you want to go to there's different pathways you can take that then move you into a level where you, you race and, and earn points and win and it gives you a bit of a storyline in between and again tons of customizables you can customize your play area or your room with different things you can earn in the game uh do that you're like that's not something i usually like to do but i do like winning cars and upgrading them and seeing how they look and behave differently as you play with them and it's pretty awesome. 
I had a really good time playing this game and you can play it with this is a family based game that you can play multiplayer and have a really really good time and it's it's not going to be an overly expensive title you can find it uh, physical retail but if you want to get a digital you can get it and then order your seasons passes or get your uh your you know villains content and your your batman expansion for it uh it's always a good sign when a third party company like this is creating a game like a racing game and they get like a dc or marvel license when you get a dc license like this it usually instills some sort of confidence that the game is actually good and family friendly and that's what exactly what we have here uh so it's a good family racing game you can get for your kids at this holiday season Hey guys, this is Mike the Birdman here, and I'm here with a review coming to us from EA and DICE. A review code was provided to us. I'm talking about Battlefield 2042 on the Xbox Series X. So I haven't played a lot of the Battlefield games, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I played Battlefield 1942 way back in the PS3 days for a little bit, and I most recently played Battlefield Hardline on the Xbox One, and I really enjoyed that one, but evidently not a lot of people did. I thought it was fun anyway. Uh, so 2042 was a different sort of beast for me and does have a lot in common with some older uh, Call of Duty titles. In fact, it made me think of, I think it was like Black Ops 4, which didn't really have a storyline, which this one doesn't. There is no single player campaign. So let's get that right out of the way. It does have a narrative where basically the world is in trouble due to collapsing economies, um, stuff is falling from the sky, rising sea levels. Basically, the world is in a blender of poop and you have to figure it out. And you are part of a faction known as No Pats, so you're like a refugee and you'll fight for whoever pays you. Basically, you're like a merc, I guess. There's American forces and there's Russian forces, but it doesn't matter, you're all trying to capture objectives. Now, there are three separate game modes here, but I mostly focused on all-out warfare because that is, to what I've been told, is the traditional Battlefield experience. But there's also something called Hazard Zone where you basically like extract intel or hard drives or whatever. I had a hell of a time trying to get into a game like that. I kept experiencing crashes. Um, it just, it wasn't a good time. And then there's the Battlefield Portal where you can kind of relive classic uh, Battlefield maps and stuff like that using the new UI, but whatever. Let's talk about All Out Warfare here. So basically you'll have these huge battles with like well over like 100 players and it can be fun. That being said, however, in my experience, and I've been at, I probably played well over 12 hours or more, uh, I found it was Vehicle Spam the Game and Running Simulator 2021. And that being said, these maps are huge. I'm not saying they're like Verdansk from Call of Duty Warzone or anything like that, but they are pretty big and they are pretty barren at times too the one map that i always seem to get stuck on i think the map's called breakdown or either way it takes place in the snow it's in the antarctic and i just found myself running a lot um and i played as the medic i think her name is maria because i had an ability which is kind of neat it, it, it's a specialist ability which allows you to heal your teammates at range uh, so that was tremendously useful and I figured, you know, what, I'm going to have the most fun playing as a medic. I get to help people. I'm always going to be getting score, but there's a suicide button. So if you see someone go down, unless you're like right beside them, nine times out of ten, they're going to kill themselves. Um, and it's really annoying, but that's maybe a player at a cat thing more than, than anything. Um, there are two ways to win, or there are mul multiple ways to win, I guess I should say. You can either deplete the enemy's reinforcements, which seems to be what most people uh, end up doing, or you can do something else differently, and you can capture objective points on the map, which allows you to spawn uh, more people there. It's where it's where like you can spawn in. You can also spawn into vehicles, which is kind of fun, so you could end up being like a gunner, on like a truck or you could be like a gunner in a tank or you could be a pilot in like um jets and helicopters although there always seems to be like hovercraft and other um basic vehicles i guess um 
And I found one thing, and I really hate to nitpick on this, but I was looking at the gunsmith, and, I, and I'm coming from the Call of Duty world when it comes to just slap on, slap on an attachment, like your optics, your foregrip, maybe something for your stock and stuff like that. Here, it took me forever to figure out how to put a scope on a gun. Now, either I was having a derp moment or it's not as intuitive as they say. And you have, there's like a drop down that, that appears. That's like three slots. There's your iron sights, your, I guess your long range optic and your mid range, uh, your optic and long range optic. Um, and I was like, oh my God, what the hell? But I eventually did figure it out. Now my LMG is a pretty good uh, mid range optic. And it seems to be like the meta guns dominate in this game. I think there's one called the PP, and I, I swear to God, every time I died, it was like an AK that dropped me, and I was one of the only people using an LMG. I never saw any other LMG users out on the field. LMGs are what I just tend to kind of gravitate towards. I like my squad automatic weapons, and that's just me. Like, I'm a gun guy in that regard. Um, but like I said, it's not to say that there wasn't fun to be had here. It's just... In my experience with this game, I never got cooperative squads that wanted to work together. And the fact that you couldn't coordinate over voice chat really hurts this. Like you can see chat happening. Like you see people typing in the upper left corner because I this game has a like cross play. And let's just say there were some vulgar things said. Um, so that was an experience to say the least, but hey, it's 2021. I shouldn't be surprised. Um, I don't know, like, I, I got the ultimate edition of this game, which includes the year one Seasons Pass content and stuff that'll be coming down the road. And as of this recording, a new patch just dropped last week, which would address some of the technical issues, which I was experiencing. I experienced stuttering, which did happen as of this week. I was playing yesterday and I got some flickering. I got some stuttering. I kept getting crashes on my Xbox. Um, it wasn't fun in those instances however when i did have fun when things are really clicking i'm like man this can be great but there needs to be a lot of work done here and that's the unfortunate thing to say about battlefield 2042 is it needs a lot of work it needs a lot of love it needs a lot of tlc and i think another six to eight months in the oven would have really 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 been needed in fact if i had my way I would have loved to have seen this idea of the no pats and the storyline fleshed out into a single player campaign. Like, yeah, I'm one of I'm one of those guys that plays FPSs for the story. Like, I love Call of Duty Cold Wars, multiple uh, endings and paths. I loved Modern Warfare. I loved Advanced Warfare, Kevin Spacey with Standing, and I've had a really good time. And with Battlefield Hardline, that was interesting. Um, and the other Battlefield games, like Battlefield 4, was fun when I played that, however little. Um, it's not what I wanted, and that really sucks, because this game has a lot of heavy competition in the shooter uh, category this year. I mean, we've got Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free for everybody right now. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard, hopefully it'll find its footing at some point. Uh, Cold War is still going strong. Um... Battlefield 2042 just falls short in a lot of ways. And that's really unfortunate. I wanted more from this game because it was hyped up to be something so cool. And it ends up being spawn killed snipers or it's vehicle spam. And I, I, I don't want that. And like I said, I don't want to talk negative about this because I really wanted this to be something special. I really wanted this to be, this is the battlefield that gets me into it. And it wasn't. So what's my recommendation on Battlefield? Keep an eye on it. Maybe they'll start to iron things out into the new year. We'll have to wait and see, but there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. A lot of stuff that needs to be addressed and added in. The meta's got to change. And I would definitely wager money on this, that this was a victim of COVID with all the delays and people working from home. And that's not the fault of those individual developers and programmers, it's, this is the world that we live in and gaming and other industries have just suffered. And I think that that's just the way it is. So Battlefield 2042, my final verdict is 
wait and see how this one pans out over the next few months maybe there'll be a price drop uh maybe they'll add in more maps modes they'll add more guns there's got to be a lot of stuff here to really pull you in but as of right now i cannot in good conscience recommend you pay full price for this however i think on ea on ea play there's a trial that you can give a whirl so maybe give it a chance on there see what you think but ultimately battlefield 2042 i think it's time to go back in the oven for just a little bit longer this is a fair request and i promise i will not judge any person only as a teenager and that this is no more right than saying all teenagers are drunken dope addicts or glue sniffers Alex here with a quick review of Monster Rancher 1 and 2, which was just released a little while ago. I've had some time to mosey around with it uh, as we were getting ready to wind down our year uh, on the Nintendo Switch. And what you're getting here is sort of a hybrid package. Yes, it's both games. Uh, there's aspects of it that are in HD now, clearly. And then there's some aspects that feel like they're upscaled from the original PlayStation 1 releases, which has a charm in its own. Uh, the big question here... I mean, I think most people know what Monster Rancher is. It's a, uh, think Pokemon, but you're more raising the the monsters, more of a life simulator that way, and then you do battle with them, and there's a bit of a story attached to it, yada, yada, yada. Raise your level to be able to create more bigger, better, 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 better monsters. Uh, and in the meantime, usually what you did, the novelty back then was you could put other games inside of your system or other uh, CDs, and it would read the serial number of the track listings and it would create either a random monster or, or if there was a pool of a uh, library of cds and games that were from the same company it would then know and create a specific monster sometimes related to that game or related to that musical artist uh, you get around that on the switch by doing a search in a database for a specific cd or and it even has modern stuff so like people in the last few years you can look up if it's been released in Japan, it's probably got uh, a list on their catalog that they have online. And if it's uh, if it's going to unlock a monster at too high a level, it will let you know just like it did previously. So that's a nice workaround since you can't just swap around cartridges or discs or anything when you're using the Switch. Uh, it's an inventive use of that feature. I hope that they do more with it in the future with other Monster Rancher releases. I do think it's a solid game or a solid set of games. It did bring back a bit of that nostalgia factor for me. I remember back in the day playing Monster Rancher 2. I don't think I knew anybody that had Monster Rancher 1, but a lot of people I knew had Monster Rancher 2. Like, and when I say a lot, I mean like five different kids had it on PlayStation, which is a rarity for an RPG in the PlayStation era that wasn't Final Fantasy. That there was that many kids randomly that had it. I think maybe it was just something that the people found at like Zellers or something on sale and picked it up and they ended up thinking it was cool. And I remember finding a Mace CD in a, an empty locker in grade seven. And Mace, I think it was the wrapper. It was just a CD in there. Somebody just left it, empty locker. And we used that and it unlocked a, uh, it unlocked a character with a, uh, a like white diamondy looking encrusted coat. And that's exactly what was on the cover of the CD. So that was something that was in the database. Uh, the other thing was uh, Backstreet Boys Millennium CD unlocked a happy galley i remember that very specifically because it was a, a unique looking galley monster and it was specifically for the backstreet boys and so we would actually keep a little database with our friends we would write down on a sheet of paper okay who's got what cd and you would have somebody come over and they'd bring like 30 cds and you'd spend like two hours seeing what they would unlock that was the fun cool thing of that before the age of the internet like the internet was there but nobody there wasn't really a huge database of these things so your friends would just grab anything and try it out oh let's grab that let's try putting in other games let's try putting in this let's try putting in like children's cds or putting in like heavy metal and seeing what happens and a lot of times it got you something either completely random or something unique based on that band which is pretty darn sweet so it's brought back a little bit of that feeling in my head and those memories which is always a good thing uh and it's obviously a family-friendly game anybody can play 
uh, you can play it on the go. It looks great on my Switch OLED edition. So there's that going for it. Uh, and I, I don't want people to like sleep on this one because I think that everybody should be picking it up if you're a fan of this. If you're a fan of Pokemon, uh, you're probably going to like the Monster Rancher series. And I hope that they put out more of these in the future. It's nearing the end of December, and our friends at Mill Creek have sent over a box of new releases to check out and review. Uh, I wanted to make sure that some of these would be able to uh, make their way into your stockings and little Christmas presents and, and whatnot, and wanted to make sure that that could come out in a timely manner. So I think we're going to have this probably come out in either one of our last regular shows or uh, or in like a review show that... Uh, we could do some sort of roundup for. So we have a few releases of Ultraman. Now, interestingly enough, uh, we had been receiving a lot of them from Blu-ray. I guess not all of some of the newer ones have uh, Blu-ray licenses for them. So these are in the standard DVD size and DVD cases, but it includes complete series and specials for Ultraman uh what is that title i can't read that because that's not in english it is ultraman tiga ultraman dina and ultraman gaia battle Lifers. oh so this is a collection of uh main and specials and we also have ultraman Yeah, this is okay. So this is neat. So uh, it's one of the modern Ultramans from 2017 when they did sort of the relaunch of them. So that's a pretty neat box set. And uh, it includes some specials and TV movies on DVD. So I guess if you're looking for uh, some of the recent Ultramans, this is good to get. This won't, unfortunately, it looks like match up with the other box art that was available for the blu-rays that were coming out from the classic series but it will fit with the standard size dvd sets that they've also released which is uh, a pretty good thing as well uh, also along with that um is uh something i didn't think i was actually going to review simply because i saw the dove approved logo on the front and went oh no um, i am not necessarily a big fan of the christian family movies I've usually find them to be beyond sappy um, and beyond saccharine and and unbelievable or of, of low quality. This this one's fine. Um, it is mir uh, the girl who believes in miracles. Um, if if you're a really religious person or you want family friendly stuff, you don't have to worry about. It says age is twelve plus approved for Dove, which means it's probably rated G for anybody else. Um, that being said, it's got Kevin Sorbo in it. It's got uh, Mira Sorvino. And it's fine. I mean, I, I found myself cringing through a lot of it because I'm not someone who likes these kinds of movies. But I was not completely turned off and it wasn't like the lowest budget thing ever. So if you've got somebody in your family that, I mean, we've got people in my family, uh, one branch of it, that don't let their kids watch anything that's not got the dove symbol on it and i've i had at one point to do some babysitting and it was it was interesting <laughs> trying to watch some of the stuff this is significantly better than some of the other stuff that's been put out by that before so uh maybe give that a pick for your family it's not going to be for somebody like me but then again it's i'm not the target audience for it so you know take that as you will it is a solid release in that uh it is at least worth a watch, I think, for somebody who is into those kinds of movies. Uh, moving along, we have the Native American Healing and Spirituality Collection. This is something that I wanted to hand over to Birdman to review 
but timing and COVID and things just made it so that it was not possible. But he's probably going to get this from me as a little extra uh, stocking stuffer or something, maybe, uh, which is a collection of Native American produced documentaries. Uh, so it includes Native American healing in the 21st century, Don't uh, Get Sick After June, uh, Romance of a Vanishing Race, and it also includes uh, 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 Walila in live in concert. Sorry. Yeah, I've got a little tongue twisted there. Now, uh, it's a pretty bare bones release, but it's all, everything here, uh, but four hours worth released on a couple discs. And timing wise, good idea to release this. Uh, I think it's worth watching. I, I did watch two of these on here. I watched the Native American Healing in 21st Century and Don't Get Sick After June. And they're well produced. Uh, I was surprised there's a different perspective than i'm used to seeing because a lot of stuff i see is mostly just canadian uh first nation stuff and this is obviously american documentaries but uh pretty good and cheap like you can find that probably five bucks or so at walmart so good stocking stuffer uh moving on to our next release here we have stripped las vegas real lives uncensored which is a dvd release uh inside the lives of sin city's top exotic dancers actually a really interesting uh show I was surprised watching this, uh, how interesting it was. Like, it has a big warning. Warning, this program contains some suitable uh, material for adult audiences only. Of course it does. Uh, but it shows into the lives of what it's like to be an exotic dancer in the States. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, worth a watch. Um, I don't know, like, if you're a big fan of documentaries and that, you'll want to pick it up. But I don't think it's just, like, a regular kind of disc you'd pick up for just about anybody. Uh, but moving on to one that is like that, we have The Match, which is inspired by a true story, starring Amanda Santi, Franco Nero, and a few other actors. Uh, they it says they were forced to play, they refused to lose. It is uh, a 1944 World War II style a movie. The movie takes place, sorry, in 1944. Uh, it is about a football match between a Nazi team and a team of prisoners. Uh, good actors, uh, well made. Uh, it's in the ultra wide. At, at, the anamorphic video ratio i wish this would have been a uh blu-ray because it would have uh, really popped with the visuals on there as it stands it's a pretty good direct to video release and uh it is pretty bare bones there's nothing else on here but if you're looking for a stocking stuffer this is good this is the kind of thing it's probably going to my mom she's gonna love that uh so if you've got somebody who likes historical biopics and it's got good actors in it too and it's well directed so i highly recommend that uh now on to our last two that we have here from mill creek we have josie and the pussycats now this is the 20th anniversary it's funny i never did see this i remember a lot of friends went and saw this in theaters uh back in high school it was uh rachel lee cook rosario dawson tara reed and you know what <laughs> it's, it's stupid but it's fun uh now this is uh a bare bones release uh in that there's no like digital copy it's uh, it's in a pretty simple case, but it does have the commentary on there, uh, feature commentary from the directors, uh, a couple behind the scenes featurettes, a deleted scene or two that I saw there that were kind of funny. Uh, there's a, a, music, a couple music videos on here, which obviously makes sense because it's Josie and the Pussycats. Um, it is in its original aspect ratio. Uh, the visual quality is perfect. It's uh, lossless surround sound, uh, a good, simple release. And again, pretty much going to be five or ten bucks if you see it retail in stores uh and you want to pick it up last minute for christmas uh good deal a lot better than i was expecting a heck of a lot better than like the gem and the holograms movie that is 100 percent for sure and our last but certainly not least release is the this has been in the works for quite some time it's the blu-ray set of i dream of genie the complete series now it's put into two individual amory cases uh, with one, first one has seasons one and two, the second has three, four, and five, and they're the slim cases. So this whole thing is not going to take up too much space on your shelf, and it's a regular Blu-ray size, not one of those weird boxes that uh, previously I Dream of Genie was released in a weird box that you would have to fit on top of your shelf. It was kind of stupid, but you know here we get everything. It's all the entire show uh, in its original aspect ratio. Uh, it says 2.0. Uh, Dolby uh, HD Master but it's 2.0 mono so it's mono coming out of two different speakers and there is English subtitles if you're wondering uh, for people with uh, the hearing impaired now 
It's all 139 episodes in their original broadcast presentation, meaning it's not the cut syndicated copies that appeared on home video and releases from the past, uh, including the first season that's in black and white. It's a 12 disc set, which you think, oh, are, are they cramming too much? No, these are dual layer discs and they cram every episode at the maximum quality they can while putting them in, in that many discs. Um, it, it Now, it doesn't have like any, I think, future like they, they did like reunions and stuff later on this is just the series but it is everything and i know that the regular release of the dvd of this series at one point it was out of print at one point it was like 59 bucks at one, whatever this has a depending on where you're going to go you're going to spend anywhere from 75 to 100 ish dollars maybe a little more but for that retro tv collector like my dad was looking for this i know aaron is, was looking for this uh there's I went and watched this. It is so much higher quality than the streaming copies that are available online. It is so much higher quality than uh, what's available pretty much anywhere else. Uh, streaming, the, the home video releases previously, it is so much better and well worth it. Milk Creek, every once in a while, they put out a classic TV show release on Blu-ray, and I'm always surprised at how high quality it is. So this is going to be like, if you want a featured a gift to give your mom or your dad or if you're a big uh or even your grandparents or if you're a big uh tv fan from the 60s this is one of the better ones of the year for sure do you have any hobbies i collect spores molds and fungus all that thought it's crapper time A little earlier uh, in the last week or two, we had our gift guide come out and we mentioned some of the uh, items we received from PDP for review. Uh, and they were actually reviewed earlier and wanted to include them in the gift guide simply because uh, they were pretty cool and they were all themed with Animal Crossing. Uh, that being the uh, the carrying case the for the Switch, the Switch uh, wire controller, as well as the headset that was uh, Aloha Green. Uh, now, we did receive a couple other items included in there just to sort of give it, run the gamut of what they had released in the last year or so. Um, we received a uh, uh, Rock Candy wired controller that had LED lighting that lit up in there. That was uh, something I wanted to mention here. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I'm not, my personally, I'm not a huge fan of like crazy light up stuff. I'm more of a sleek, uh, I'm more of a function over style kind of guy, but it is a really neat controller and you can pick it up, I think on sale right now, it's anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks Canadian uh, for the holidays. So that might be something to keep an eye out for. Uh, there's also, and this was obviously a Rock Candy Switch controller. Uh, we also received one uh, that was uh, one of the themed controllers that was not uh, like the, like there's the uh, Face Off Deluxe Plus audio wire controller, the Animal Crossing one we had talked about previously, uh, but we also received the one that was the uh, the, the Link uh, one that was Legend of Zelda themed, which is pretty awesome. You might want to check that out as well. Um, and I, I wanted to mention the, the sort of final item that we received that was themed is there's a Legend of Zelda uh, portable carrying case for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm using it currently to hold my Switch OLED edition or OLED edition, uh, but it also fits the Switch uh, uh, Lite. It also fits the regular one. It's got little uh, elastic bands inside of it to hold your system in place once it's in there with the Joy-Cons attached. Uh, so, and it's pretty stylish, cool. I like that it's licensed and it's not like a low quality build of anything. Uh, I think that their whole line of stuff is, is pretty good. And I wanted to mention, this is something we received in the interim in between. I uh, mentioned it last year, but I wanted to mention it just quickly this year as like a last minute gift idea. If you're somebody who has picked up the uh, the Xbox Series X, I know the Series X has been pretty much out of stock everywhere, but the Series S is in stock pretty much everywhere. And I have a Series S uh, that I received a little while ago, and I use that for the bedroom and when I go, if I travel to like my parents and stay you know the weekend for the holidays i'll be bringing it with me and 
what I like about it is you can use the universal uh, remote that they've received. Uh, they released now there's been a couple in the past um that uh pdp has released i think they called it it was like the pdp talon wireless controller uh, i'll have to double check that but uh pulling it up right now on the website because i wanted to make sure that i mentioned it because i have the smaller media remote they I, we received for review last year and i mentioned it saying that it was really cool i think we got it in the new year of last year uh don't remember if we got it right before christmas but it is something uh, that I do recommend. Uh, the media remote is a little smaller than the, the full size one, but it works by just pointing it towards the system. I think there's an IR receiver in the front of the system. And if you don't want to use your controller to do media navigation, it works just great. I've, I think I've had the same batteries in there for a year and I was using it with my series X last year. And then this year when I, in the fall, when I got my series S it's been my go-to as my media consumption device. And you wouldn't think it, but that a lot of the cheaper uh, controllers use like a, a dongle you have to plug in. This just points in front of the system. It works. Uh, the controller lights up when you pick it up, just like a professional, uh, like third party controller that you'd see for our remote control for like Sony does. So it's pretty much the same build quality as what I would expect a first party device to be. Uh, only it's made by PDP. So that's just something I wanted to mention as an extra little gift idea you might want to consider. Uh, and that's going to do it. That's pretty much everything we've received this year from PDP. So if you if you have like last minute ideas, you want to pick them up on Amazon or pick them up in the store and you see them, they've got a bunch of game, uh, game accessories on sale, the different colored controllers. They've got ones that are themed from Zelda and Animal Crossing and Mario and, and so on. Uh, you might want to check them out. They all work fantastic as a wired device. Obviously, no no lag or latency. Uh, their carrying cases are a significant jump above the quality of a lot of the other third-party cases, uh, as well as their headphones, their headsets. They're always decent. As far as wired headsets go, they are probably the best third-party ones in the market. Well, it's finally happened. We have received our first review copy from the Criterion Collection that's on a 4K UHD disc. That is The Red Shoes. Now, this is a film from 1948. Uh, it is one I had never seen before. Uh, now, I will give a little bit of background um, into the film itself, just from the synopsis on the back, because I think a lot of people might not have... Um, now, the description they gave is The Red Shoes, the singular Fantasia from uh, Michael Powell and Emmerich uh, Pressburger is cinema's quintessential backstage drama, as well as one of the most glorious Technicolor feasts ever concocted for the screen. Moira Shearer is a rising star ballerina torn between an idealistic composer and a ruthless impresario in intent on perfection, featuring outstanding performances blazingly beautiful cinematography by Jack Cardiff, Oscar-winning sets of music, and an unforgettable hallucinatory uh, central dance sequence. This beloved classic, dazzlingly restored, uh, stands as an enthralling tribute to the life of the artist. And with that out of the way, I will say it is, when they're saying like, like a feast for the eyes, it's amazing. Uh, I am, like, I mean, I had wished that they had gone with Criterion and gone 4K earlier, and we didn't really get a chance to check out the uh, Citizen Kane release, but I have heard from, uh, from Ken and from others that there are some problems with uh, the audio tracks for it, and that might be why we didn't receive a, a press release or a press copy of it, even though we had requested it earlier than this. But, you know, this, I can say, works just fine. It syncs up well. Um, there is a Blu-ray included here. It's in its original aspect ratio of 1.37 to 1, which is that ever so slightly wider than regular full screen because that's how they were filmed back then um because back then they would the, for anybody that wants to know the 1.33 to 1 or, or the standard television aspect ratio it's the reason it's that aspect is not just the tv itself the film they used had an optical track at the side for the audio whereas when you're watching these old silent films before widescreen was invented the 1.37 that's the whole width of the actual 35 millimeter film because they would record the audio completely separate yada 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 hence the slightly wider and when you would watch a home video release on vhs from it they used to crop them even some dvds they would actually crop the edges off the sides to make it that perfect uh full screen four by three aspect well on 
uh, better quality releases from bigger companies like uh, like the Criterion Collection. When they put out their Blu-rays and now their 4Ks, you do get the additional image on the left and right that is the full image that was recorded onto the actual film. So with that out of the way, we'll say this. It has Dolby Vision HDR on it, and it looks so good for something done in Technicolor. And they're they're not kidding. That uh, hallucinatory dance sequence is is so interesting with the, the way the film grain works with it. I wish more and more pre 1960s when they used to use the Technicolor like really heavily movies would get the 4K treatment, so I could see this with the proper uh, proper color tone mapping and everything in there. Uh, now there's a whole bunch of other special features here as well. Uh, there's, uh, restoration demonstrations showing how they did it, uh, with, uh, Martin Scorsese involved with it actually, um, audio commentary from, uh, film scholars. There's, uh, a documentary on the making of the film from the year 2000. So some archival stuff, uh, some stuff from 2009 Cannes Film Festival, publicity stills there's a, uh, a 1948 animated film uh of some painted storyboards uh there's some alternate angle stuff there's english subtitles there's an essay uh it is everything i would have wanted from what criterion has been putting out in the past few years but in 4k and i really hope to see more of it like this in the future uh if you're a film aficionado this is one you're not going to want to miss and you're going to want it for your collection for sure. After what seems like uh, an eternity in shipping delay, uh, more on that, just look at what's going on in California with their uh, their entire shipping system at the docks, and same with Vancouver with uh, the storms that hit. It's been kind of a nightmare. We're talking sometimes three months to get anything shipped from the West Coast to the East Coast uh, if it's stuck underneath all those bins, which is crazy. That out of the way, we finally got some stuff that we were going to talk about for back to school originally, but actually came in just after, and I'm talking within hours of us recording and releasing our uh, Christmas gift guide. And I was able to put a link into them as honorable mentions because we couldn't actually talk about them because I hadn't had a chance to put my hands on them yet. And that was the uh, the Anchor uh, Nano. Uh, there's the, the different Nano uh, charging uh, wall warts. Uh, and those are the ones that use the GAN technology. We had uh, reviewed a 30 watt version of that in the past. And what we received is the full line to check out. So another 30 watt, which is fantastic, works great with pretty much any quick charge items, a 45 watt, which is at the, the wattage that you would see for uh, some of the higher end iPads. And again, these things, they, they're very tiny, they don't heat up you can touch them. You don't have to worry about them getting hot to the touch or, uh, you know, having any circuit overloading or anything like that. These are really high-end USB-C chargers, and they're USB-C 3.0 capable, power delivery, all that fun stuff. Um, and they'll do like the iPhone uh, iPhone 12 Max, whatever you want to call it, plus the iPad Pros. And there's a 60 watt one that was included, which is enough to power a lot of laptops. Like. We're talking full-end Ultrabooks. You can charge them that way, which is pretty freaking awesome that you've got this little charger when you could have one cable to do it. We're getting to the point where with these chargers from uh, from Anchor, they'll actually eliminate the need for like full-on AC-DC adapter chargers. Like you can just plug this little tiny guy in and use it for pretty much anything. Um, and then of course they have larger charging uh, platforms and, and power delivery systems that we haven't had a chance to look at, but it's kind of amazing. But what we did have a chance to look at uh, from them was there was the Soundcore Liberty uh, Pro 3s. I had talked about the Liberty Pro 2s uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe, uh, as being my absolute favorite and highest recommended uh, 
wireless earbuds. And uh, I loved them a lot, but the problem was I dropped one of them and it hit the ground and I, I in picking it up, something had happened and the right ear stopped working on me. And I was very sad face after using them for like six months as my main ones. And it was, it was me being dumb. I was carrying stuff and I had things in my ear and I turned my head too quickly and it popped out of my ear. And I went, no, and it fell and made a tumble down the stairs and went bloop, 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 bloop. And it just, it fell the wrong way. Like normally it wouldn't have happened and it just stopped working. And they had the, by far the best acoustics, the best bass response, best frequency response, yada, yada, yada. Well, now they have the, th the revision for the third edition of them. And they're everything that was good about the, the previous ones with slightly better battery life, better wireless reception, uh, there's less static or cutout if you are moving a little too far away from where you're broadcasting the Bluetooth to. Uh, it's just a, a revision overall. Nothing too dramatic except slightly better battery life than previous and the revisions I said earlier. It's like taking something that was already great and making it even better. So I'm very happy with the results from these. Uh, they're going to be my daily drivers for sure. And they're highly recommended to you. They are way better than any of those Raycons you're going to get. You see everybody, all the other podcasts advertising that crap. Let's be honest here. They are cheap Chinese garbage headphones, those Raycons. And they just, they're not worth the money that they're asking, even if they're, they're technically cheaper than, than, you know, AirPods or whatever. You know what? These are better than AirPods. These are better than the Google ones. These are better at like $100 or more cheaper. So, I mean, it's just, it's not me shilling or anything for uh, for the Soundcore Liberties. It's just they're just better. They just really are. And if you can afford, if you can, if you can afford paying a little more than than what for those Raycons that are advertised, save up a little bit and get something better. And just just don't drop them down multiple flights of stairs when you're going into an apartment building because you turned your head too quickly. <laughs> uh, outside of that, I'm happy that obviously I have a replacement pair that I can now use. And I, I think that they would make a really good gift. Or if you've got some Christmas money after the holidays, you might want to pick them up for yourself. Uh, and the final item that was received for uh, us to check out is something that I've had my eye on to, to look at for a while. And that is uh, the Anchor, uh, it's got a bit of a name, 577 uh, Thunderbolt Docking Station. It's a 13-in-1 Thunderbolt 3 docking station. Uh, as far as Thunderbolt devices, I only have one that would normally be useful for that. So I had my brother bring over a couple of his devices. He's got Thunderbolt 3 capable laptop. Uh, and he's like, because he was really interested in this because he works from home. You know, a lot of these docking stations are either bulky or they don't have all the features that he's looking for. So he said, Alex, oh, you're, you are going to check that out. I really want to see how that works. So what you get is a pretty small form factor heavy duty like it's got some weight to it uh docking station that can really clean up a lot of the clutter on your desk uh it uh it right now doesn't work with m1 macbooks i'll say that right now that's the only thing it's not compatible because they use their own proprietary tech in that right now but outside of that uh it works with pretty much everything so when you're connecting with a single monitor you can get a 5k display so 5120 by 2880 at 60 hertz via the Thunderbolt 3 downstream port, uh, or you can get 4K 60 via the HDMI port. Uh, when you have two monitors, it supports uh, two 4K monitors at 60 hertz using the Thunderbolt 3 and the HDMI port, uh, which is pretty darn good for something that isn't in the, like the $700 or $800 price point, which some of these docks end up getting into. We're looking at something half of that or less. Now, as far as other features that are on there, uh, what you have is power delivery uh, of 85 watts plus 18, depending on what you're plugging in. So 18 watts being one of the USB ports in the front, charge things. You can power most laptops with this unless the laptop has something like Dell where they include like a, uh, a high-end video card attachment that you know requires 100 watts or more or something. Uh, it does have full 40 gigabits of bandwidth that it can have passing through it. It has all of uh, the things that you would think that you'd want in it that you might need in the future if you're not you know for expandability uh an ethernet port it has multiple usb-c and multiple usb-2 uh right built right into it which is 
uh, a big feature that a lot of laptops now only have like one or two ports. So having extras, it has a uh, micro SD slot. It has a full size SD slot for uh, full speed UHS one up to 312 megs a second read on there. So it's got a really high end card reader for the higher end ones you use on uh, like 4K camcorders and stuff. Uh, there is uh, full like sound card audio in and out uh, that it can do digital audio through. Uh, it has obviously an HDMI 2.0 port. The Thunderbolt port supports DisplayPort at the higher end uh, 5K, which is pretty good. It's not HDMI 2.1 compliant, but you're looking at double or, or more money for something that does that currently. It has a USB-C data port that's 10 gigabit. Uh, it has a 10 gigabit power delivery, 18 watt. So what you can do is you're able to, with the Thunderbolt downstream port, uh, or you're able to do a lot of, of like it's even got a gigabit ethernet, like I said previously, you can power a fair amount of things here. Um, it's got a USB-A port that supports seven and a half watts, which is a USB-C, or sorry, USB-3 charging, standard charging for five gigabit. Uh, you can power a bunch of devices from this while you're powering your computer, your laptop, and and have all the connectivity. So it it basically eliminates the need for having all these extra ports on a computer or on a laptop. Uh, pretty sweet overall if you're going to be working from home. Uh, and you know you're looking at you know a few hundred dollars for this. So it's not it's like 300 US. It's not on the cheap scale, but it is not nearly like it's competition you're looking at five, $600 from getting one from Dell, getting one from Apple, getting one uh, from third party companies. It, so this is something that if you're looking to invest in your computer setup at home or your business setup at home, this is something you might want to look at. It takes a very little space on your desk and it has all the connectivity that you're going to need. Those magnificent bastards. Color me kooky, but something very odd is going on around here. You're not allowed to talk anymore. And that is going to do it for, uh, I guess, the Turner Treasure Review Show of the Year. This is it. This is it. We're done. Uh, we will, <clears throat> uh, knock on wood, uh, knocking on my own head here, <laughs> be recording the Christmas commentary tomorrow or the next day. Uh, if that doesn't happen, we'll see. we got got maybe a backup plan for B or C to have something out for, uh, for Christmas. And then we are excuse me we are officially done for the year we'll have everything recorded that we were already going to record uh we've got i've got to have the next few days to uh prepare for christmas with my family but also get all of our stuff scheduled like the next several weeks worth of earth versus soup as well as uh, these episodes that are pre-recorded and the stargate twig tactical weapons integration group episodes that start up in the new year and we are back, I think, we've discussed it back and forth about when we're coming back to regular programming, and it's looking like uh, it's going to be, I think, January 16th, where he, Mike and I are going to get back to recording, and on the 17th, we'll have the first Twig show of the new year. There might be something in between there, uh, something major happens or changes, uh, as well as if we're still waiting on some stuff for the gift guide uh that didn't make it out that is still stuck in the west coast um and obviously there's going to be some games and some movies released not so much usually in the week obviously between christmas and the new year uh but there's always something coming so if we've got enough together before we start recording the show in a month's time then we'll probably have another review episode out um, maybe <laughs> as long as if it's something that's timely, it needs to be out. Uh, there are also plans. I've got to figure out during our hiatus, I might be recording an episode of Twig Sunday Funnies on forgotten Canadian TV shows, uh, part two that we were supposed to do a while ago with JT. And I'm also probably, as long as timing works out for everybody involved, going to be working on a episode with, uh, Ken uh, from this anime on 
some anime project i can't remember my brain is a blank on what we were supposed to be talking about but i do want to record with ken and get something there uh as far as our regular other shows like loose cannon uh we were going to do something for christmas it's just not going to work out there's too much going on but we'll be doing something obviously starting up regular programming again in the new year with aaron and it's going to be very fun uh we're just we just got to take a break it's too much going on right now and and also public health stuff is picking up pretty dramatically here very quickly uh same goes for future imperfect we wanted to do a year-end special talking about our thoughts on uh lower decks as well as prodigy and uh the the newest season of discovery (laughs) but that's going to be on hold because i just don't think we can wrangle people together that'll be in the new year we'll we'll do an episode it's going to be one episode probably to catch up on everything that's aired so far in that realm uh, and then we'll go from there and see what we want to talk about. But and that's as far as our regular shows that way. I know Birdman does Nerd of the Third. It all depends on their schedules for that. Uh, the Nerd of the Third B side. Uh, that's going to be probably not a monthly thing. It's going to be more infrequent when it's going to be a fun Saturday show when they when they feel like recording. It'll be a little treat whenever that pops up, if that makes any sense. And then anything else we've got going? There's. I mean, there could be some more stuff in the works. I know Birdman's had some ideas for shows in the new year, and we'll probably discuss that when we do our, you know, first show back. You know, are there any ideas we have going forward? But that's going to do it. That's everything right now. Uh, hope everybody, you know, if we don't get our Christmas episode out, which I think we will, but if we don't, uh, everybody, I hope you have a happy holiday. Uh, drive safe, be safe. Uh, I know depending on what country you're in, what region you're in, whatever's going on, covid is still not gone it's it's actually ramping up at least even where we are where we have to be very careful uh so we're we want everybody to be safe and happy so stay home if you can uh and just you know what does birdman say be excellent to each other i know it's kind of corny but that's kind of the truth it's where we want to be at just be a good person don't do dumb and uh uh yeah i mean happy new year coming up uh maybe 2022 is going to be better than 2021 hopefully it will be and we'll sort of go from there and we'll be back and thanks everybody for being with us this whole time and and uh i'm rambling because i i know there's so much more i want to say but you know all i can say is thanks to everybody that uh listens to us uh everyone that uh all of our partners and and friends at pr companies and gaming companies and movie companies and and toy companies and music companies all these connections we've made over the years we're very happy uh, to be working with everybody i know you know you might think oh it's just the marketing machine but you know you get to know a lot of the people that you work with and it's always fun that we're working in the realm of entertainment and it's always nice to you know get to know some of the people and see where they move on and and you build a rapport and you know, it, it's always good. So for anybody that sent us, uh, you know, Christmas cards and emails and, and fans that have sent stuff and friends that have sent stuff, thank you very much as well. Appreciated. Hopefully we can make sure we respond and get back to everybody. Uh, but if we don't, at least you have it here. Thank you. Merry Christmas. And we'll talk to you soon. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Thanks for listening to this episode of This Week in Geek. Hungry for more? Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net. You can subscribe to the podcast, browse our Twitter and Instagram, and leave your thoughts on today's topics. If you'd like to give us some feedback, send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Tune in next time, and remember, lower your shields and surrender your listenership. We would be honored if you would join us. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.